Welcome to the Beyond Six Seconds podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel, and on today's episode, I'm speaking with Miles Levine, a filmmaker and public speaker living with epilepsy. His short film, Under the Lights, has become a beacon for epilepsy representation in movies, leading to daily fan art and inspiring others to open up about their disabilities. He's now making the full-length film of Under the Lights in an effort to create the single biggest epilepsy awareness campaign in history. Miles, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to have you on the show and learn more about Under the Lights. So maybe tell me a little bit about the premise and what inspired you to make Under the Lights. Yeah, well, first and foremost, I have epilepsy. (laughs) And... Uh, I've always had epilepsy and it's affected my life in so, so many ways and and my parents and, you know, my circle. And I, a formative moment for me was I remember being asked uh, by my epileptologist, that's an epilepsy specialist who said, you know, maybe you should get involved with the foundation and maybe you want to go to epilepsy camp. Maybe you want to volunteer. I said, no, I don't. Why would I spend another second, you know, surrounded by the thing that I like the least about myself? That doesn't seem, that's ridiculous, right? And of course I went and I went back for seven years and it was the most important experience of my entire life because I was face to face with people like me and the stories that my peers would tell me would would be quotes like, I have never made a friend before or... You know, my siblings, when my parents are away, they're so fearful for my safety that they lock me in my room. Um, And now in the age of Instagram, you know, that was pre-Instagram. It's, you know, everything's being filmed. Kids will go home and find videos of them having seizures online. And how do you ever recover from something like that? The unemployment rate is 50%. The suicide rate five times the national average. So I... Over the next 10 years, I would end up in rooms talking about this. I would talk about camp and I would I would talk about this stigma that I was becoming increasingly aware of. And everyone would nod. And it took me a little time to realize that everyone in the room at these events, they already know. You're not educating anyone about anything. If you're going to an epilepsy awareness event of any kind, it's because you're epilepsy aware. Mm-hmm. So, And then I also noticed that I'd go to events put on by all sorts of foundations and they all were using the same tactics and I went oh my goodness we're going to be here in 20 years this is bad these events are awesome for fundraising they're awesome for for morale but they are very poor for awareness so why is it that we have a stigma in the first place and I think well most people when they think about epilepsy they picture what they've seen in a hospital show or a horror movie, which is more than likely medically inaccurate, but that's not the problem. The problem is that it's a device placed in the narrative to scare people. And, you know, EMTs will immediately assume that we're on drugs uh, or otherwise inebriated. Um, It's just, it creates all kinds of problems. So what if we had a point of reference that was about a person just like you and me, right? Just like you and me, Mm -hmm. who's, and and we connect on that universal ground. It would do more for awareness if that was a really public touchstone Mm -hmm. than, you know, than we're going to do with these same tactics in in 10 years. And that's kind of what happened with with the film. It was uh, pretty pretty amazing what that led to. And we'll talk more, I think, about that. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell me about the premise of the film. Yeah. So Under the Lights, which started as a short film, as you mentioned, and now it's becoming the full length movie, is about a boy with epilepsy who's so desperate to feel like a regular kid. He goes to prom knowing that the lights will make him have a seizure. And I wrote this when I was you know, I, I at my worst. And I... It, it was just so hard for me to sort of watch the world grow up without me and to do things that I would never be able to do without a second thought. And, 
you know i was i had straight a's in high school i was a part of every club i was you know the quote unquote overachiever i mean i worked so so hard and and with the limitations that i have and i felt like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how hard i try i still can't have the things i i want i can't i can't be independent and um and so i i wrote this story about this kid who wants to have a normal coming of age and i think that a lot of people with disabilities have the fantasy that flash moment in your head where you ask yourself just how far you would go to do the quote unquote normal thing whether that's drive a car or get groceries on your own or go on a a trip by yourself or, or whatever those things are they feel sacred um and so that's what the short was about and it exploded it it was just meant to be this little thing that we can enjoy and sure enough there's fan art every day and then i dig into well who's making the fan art and this was the really magic thing is that these a lot of these people didn't have epilepsy wow. they were stunned they were they were excited about this idea and this concept and so for the first time ever epilepsy awareness is is cool you know what i mean like mm-hmm. like people want to engage with it because it's they suddenly are realizing like oh i actually probably know someone who has this oh oh my goodness oh, uh what do i do if someone has a seizure in my class you know and and it's it's led to people coming out as we use that phrase coming out mm-hmm. for the very first time um programs have formed around this what uh, people have made podcasts um about disability awareness that didn't exist before because they they realized I didn't get crucified for telling my story. So, you know, maybe they could too, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's what I'm really proud of. I know as I was listening to some of the other interviews you've done, you talked about epilepsy. You know, everyone has that idea from, you know, as you said, hospital shows and horror shows of, you know, the stereotypes of what epilepsy is. But I think you had said at one point that sometimes epilepsy is the time between seizures. So, Mm. and that's sort of where your life is lived, which I think is not something that people think about. And I just thought that was so fascinating that you said that. So is that sort of incorporated into the film as well, kind of showing that life and that whole experience? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, (laughs) <laughs> I, I must have said something cool there because it, it comes up <laughs> it <is cool. laughs> but yeah. I, I like that but the, the um, yeah the, I say that the, the, the epilepsy in the epilepsy story the seizures are just the punctuation yeah. you, you know there's 40 kinds of seizures it's all different some of them are conscious but but for most most people the only time you're not aware of your seizures or feeling the impact is when you're actually having one that's the only time you're not there for it you know so so you know the time in between it's it's being looked at differently it's being treated different being treated differently it's being left out it's it's being you know unaccommodated judged um you know that's that's living with epilepsy Mm -hmm. that's living with epilepsy and the other thing that that i like to say is that we talk so much about the cure well there's a few people who have a say and when or how that comes about. And I sure hope that that exists at some point. That would be lovely to be able to ease that for, you know, it's just a lot of suffering. However, there are two cures. And in between now and the, you know, the, the quote unquote cure, which could be tomorrow, it could be 40, 50 years from now, if ever, we're living with epilepsy. Yeah. And we can make that experience better today you know, medication or not, the way that we treat each other is our choice. And that's what Under the Lights has come to be about. And so to your question, the film is about a person, right? And in fact, it's about it's about the caregiver. It's about the person. It's about the friend who is going through something invisible of their own that they would rather not talk about. And, and the fact is, is we have all felt these same feelings, right? We, we all feel these same feelings. We've all felt judgment. We've all felt left out. It, it, we just have to connect on that universal common ground to just build a better world. I think it's interesting that when someone goes through a divorce or is in a car accident or loses a sibling or, or something really awful like that, we respond generally, generally, we respond with a certain amount of empathy of, wow, 
that must be hard, mm-hmm. right? I, I can't imagine what that must be like, right? But when, when it's a disability in question, the immediate reaction is for some reason different, even though that it's, it's, a, it's a life-affecting challenge, possibly like any other. But because that challenge is medical, we treat it differently. And that's something that I can't wrap my mind around, but I do think that it, it can be addressed and, and we can prove it because movies and television, when done properly, mm-hmm. when honoring a person's story you know, with kindness, has done a lot to to heal these understandings with other communities so i just i just thought why not mine yeah absolutely my guests and i have talked on the show before about the importance of authentic representation of disability in the media whether that's film or books or tv and that's something that your film is is really striving for that authentic representation And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of that representation in film and media for epilepsy out there available right now. So this is really, really important. Can you kind of tell me a little bit about the the impact and maybe expound on the importance of authentic representation of epilepsy in film like yours? Yeah, I mean, I every every community, every minority group, every subsect is going to make their own judgment on on authenticity and what that means for them but on a baseline level what that means to me is that the performance is reflective of the real thing that when i'm telling a story i'm talking about real life Mm -hmm. and when a performer performs it they're showing me real life um you know it's important for me not to record a performer unless they're giving me something so close to my real life experience that I I feel like I'm watching my life unfold, Mm -hmm. right? That's, that's authentic to me. And something where I, my perspective that may differ with other, because this is a really hot topic in, in the disability world right now is what is authentic representation. And a, a lot of groups have decided, you know, if I'm gonna see a movie about someone like me, that person better actually be just like me, right? They, they should have my diagnosis and so on. I, I take a different perspective only for my specific community at this point in time. Um, and I cannot speak for what other communities prefer, but the core problem facing my community right now is that we don't have advocates who aren't just like us. There are, there are a few people who stand up for us and help us carry the burden who do not have epilepsy or are not caregivers themselves, but we don't have very many. We don't have a lot of allies. And so I think film and directing is really interesting because my job as a director is to take someone who doesn't understand the the, the character yet, whether they have the disability or not is sort of irrelevant, and to put them in, in the shoes and to say, I want to hold your hand and I want I want you to live and breathe this character, right? I'm going to, for lack of a much better phrase, I'm going to make you have epilepsy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to go to school. You're, gonna, you're going to be embedded in, in my community. You're going to know my brothers and sisters like your brothers and sisters. And you're going to understand this as well as any caregiver would before you do this job. And if I'm good at that, if I am a good director what happens is that that person walks away from this experience intimately understanding what it's like to live as a person with epilepsy. And then that person carries for the rest of their life a sense that this is important. And that's what happened with a short film. Pierce Joseph does not have epilepsy. I chose him because together we could craft a performance where I felt like I was watching footage of myself. And and then he goes on to... Um, to serve the epilepsy community. And that's a voice that we didn't have before. There's there's a real person. This is a real thing. There's a real person who is homeless, who, who crossed paths with him, had epilepsy, had been kicked out of their home because their parent didn't want to deal with them. And because Pierce had been a part of this project, he knew where to find that person resources. He knew all about what, you know, what those circumstances were like. And that, that kid, you know, found what they needed. So mm-hmm. That's the, the set has to be a, a mix of people who already understand and people who are uninitiated 
Um, because if every single person on the set is exactly like me, then I am creating the environment that we already have, which is the room full of people who are showing up in solidarity to support something they believe in, but have nothing to learn. Mm. Um, and so my set is going to be a, a collaboration more than a, 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 a meetup, mm. if you will. Yeah. And your set's really building real allies and not just people who are educated, but who are also coming out and actively helping the community after their experiences in your film. Yeah. And, and that's what will happen with the, I mean, the, the, the feature cast is, is, is pretty, <laughs> pretty remarkable. Yes. And it's people who have direct connections to this cause who it affects their every single day life. And there's people who, who don't. And, um, but want to be. And that's the real magic of this movement is that through Under the Lights, there are so many people who are saying, epilepsy, what's that? How can I help? Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I'm very proud of that. That's awesome. And so the short film of Under the Lights, which is out now, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll link it in the show notes so that everyone can go watch it. I've watched it. It's incredible. That came out in 2022. And it has two really big name actors the two leads in it are incredible so i'd love to know how did you select the cast for the short film yeah so um it started actually with Alyssa, the female lead mm -hmm. uh in the short she used to live in my area um i was you know asking around for who the real real talented folks were around here and in in northern california and um, so she was a, basically a friend of a friend and I had never heard of her and I looked her up and I went, oh my goodness, it's like, it's like I wrote this for her. Like, it's exactly what I imagined. And then I did local auditions and was really struggling to find someone that I felt would, I mean, it's very sensitive. I'm putting my, I'm putting up my community in a person's hands. Right. Oh. And so I asked Alyssa, I said, do you know anyone who's exceptionally talented in the following areas and is a fit for this? And she put forward Pierce and I auditioned him like a thousand times <laughs> to be sure. And, um, and, and I was just really, really lucky, really, really lucky that, that he said yes. Yeah, that's awesome. So the main leads we're talking about, Pierce Joza, who you talked about before, is the main lead in the film. And then Alyssa Jarrells is the female lead in, in the film. And they're both, I think they've both been actors in, in Disney shows, and they they have other credits to their name as well. So it's really exciting to see them involved with this. Really, really cool. Yeah. Alyssa was just in uh, Fatal Attraction was her, her last credit. Oh. Yeah. So so they'll both be returning in the, in the, in the future. Um, Pierce in the same role. Alyssa will actually play a different role, um, which I'm really excited about, and uh, um, which is an odd, an odd move <laughs> when you move from short to feature. But mm -hmm. it's a, it's a really cool choice. So, um, and then, and then so many, so many other really cool names, which people can easily dig up. Uh, we got a, a recent Golden Globe winner. <laughs> I'll say that, but I won't say the names <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right here. All right, very cool. And so, you know, you talked about on set having people, you know, people who have lived experience with epilepsy, people who are aware of it, and some people who maybe are learning more about it for the first time. But as a director, what was it like for you to direct a film like this that's so close to your own experience? Uh, it, it's really, really spooky because... You know, you write something and you you write until it makes you cry, and then you know that it's 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 that personal. You you write until it's too personal, and then you put it in someone's hands and mm -hmm. you say, "I'm trusting you with this," and and then you work on it and you collaborate. And watching Pierce perform the most sensitive parts of, of the short, um, I mean, the whole room was weeping, and. And that was really magical to me because, you know, I'm weeping because it's reflective of my real life. And, but if, if, if the camera department's weeping, <laughs> that's a really good sign because it means that it's speaking to something universal about them as well. And um, it's just a, just a really, really magical experience. I know that the feature will be 
pretty brutal that way because there are so many moments like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it, it will be tough. Yeah, absolutely. And you alluded to this earlier in the conversation that the short film has already gotten a really great and passionate response. Yeah, tell me more about the response to the short film that you've gotten so far from either people with epilepsy or or people who are just learning about it for the first time. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know what to expect putting it out there. I mean, the internet can be really awful. You know, the internet can be so mean. And and so I fully expected to just have people want to tear me to shreds. And it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. I the epilepsy community so embraced Pierce. If I ever get a negative comment, it's usually, you know, from somebody who misunderstood something and then you you pop in there and they go, oh, actually, that's great, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's really remarkable how much the epilepsy community is united behind this. But but then, you know, you see the fan art, you see I get called on these Zoom calls where people want to come out to their their friends and family about their epilepsy and by showing the short and choosing not to have to explain anything it's 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 remarkable and so as a filmmaker that's really cool but I really feel like this has become something so much bigger than me and and that's the real magic of it is that it's it's not really a Miles Levine thing it's it's something that I just sort of get to be in the room for and it belongs to everyone else to do what they will with it Mm -hmm. and it, it it lets these epilepsy foundations now, you know, they their support groups will double in attendance on movie night when they show it, you know. They'll raise more money when they show the short. They'll, you know, they'll get people more interested in seizure first aid. All of these things are their idea because now they have this tool in their tool belt that gets people excited to show up. And so none of that's my doing. Mm-hmm. They get credit for all of that. Um, I just sort of get to be here for it. And that's... That's really the honor. Um, and now, and I also, I get to know my community better. I get to be an active participant in my community because of this. So um, I'm really the lucky one. And has the Epilepsy Foundation been a partner or a supporter as well throughout this? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And there are so many Epilepsy Foundations. Um, I, I've come to know most of them in the country and even throughout the world. Now I know... Uh, foundation in Italy. I just connected with one in Argentina over this. Um, it's 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 awesome. It's so so awesome. It's been translated into different languages. There there was a fan fiction in Portuguese <laughs> at one point. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Really really cool. Pretty pretty good for for a ten minute short shot in my friend's garage. You know. <laughs> not That's not bad. So cool. Yeah, well, that's great. Wow. So right now you're in the process of raising funds to make the full-length movie. So tell me about what that's been like. Yeah, oh, fundraising's brutal. Um, they, they always warn you when you when you learn about filmmaking that it's, it's going to be hard and there's no manual for it. But, oh, wow. Um, but um, we're, we are currently raising uh, just that last sliver because um, we want to shoot in March. That's what we're we're scheduled to shoot in March, wow. as of this um, January the tenth. So, at, at the time of this recording. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. So we're raising funds on SeedAndSpark.com, where people can get rewards and honor loved ones in the credits and all kinds of wonderful things like that. Um, you know, sign stuff from cast members and and whatnot. Um, and it's really cool to be able to turn to the fans and be able to say, we, we want you to be a part of this, you know, thanks for believing in this and, you know, have it continue to be something that sort of fans have ownership over and, uh, and we're getting close, but, but for anyone who's interested, you could be the reason why we're successful. So I really appreciate people checking that out. Yeah. And, you know, we'll put that link in the show notes as well to your fundraising campaign because people can donate and they can get like really cool incentives if they depending on how much they donate yeah there's 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 signed posters and there's sort of like a private behind the scenes and there's you know on the upper end you know honoring honoring loved ones in in the credits and uh, even visiting set um is on there so we just i'm just really really thankful yeah. So then the end goal is to really have this released as a full like 90 minute feature film 
in yeah theaters, oh yeah no this is that's where this is headed um, yeah. no doubt i mean this is this is destined to be in your living room on a major streaming service that's what's going to happen um that's my promise from the beginning is the largest most impactful epilepsy awareness campaign of all time and that's kind of a bold statement and and i've always sort of in the back of my mind go man when i'm talking to epilepsy groups i would hate for someone to go oh wow you're, you're diminishing my work but no they all turn around and they're all just like yeah miles you're you're totally right <laughs> you know like with this one with this one project we could reach 10 million people you know we can we this will last forever and you know um a lot a lot of awareness efforts last a day and and it belongs to the world at that point so um man what a what a journey you know from from going from i i have no interest in talking about this to yeah. this is what i do almost you know professionally now is talk about my 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 condition wow especially since as, as you said there's there's such still a stigma around epilepsy so it is something that can be hard to talk about but it sounds like the work and especially your film is going to make already is making it easier for people to come out and and talk about it more openly with their friends and family and everyone else that's the hope and you know like i'm i'm not going to end stigma but people yeah. uh, other people will you know and and my hope is that it it happens with a conversation in their living room you know mm -hmm. and and what tends to happen is you know meaning like like watching watching the the movie people watch the short and they immediately go i didn't think about this but my cousin has that i didn't think about this but when i was a kid my neighbor had that and they realize that it's it's everywhere the only reason epilepsy isn't obvious and everywhere is just because we don't talk about it it's one in 26 people will will be diagnosed in their lifetime wow. that's one in 26 people so if you think about a movie theater that's one person in every single row yeah it's wild wow yeah such a huge impact and just bringing in and educating people as you said sort of out, outside of the allies that you already have supporting epilepsy awareness but just educating society in general is is so important and uh, yeah really really exciting That's so yeah awesome. thank you yeah and what what will happen is that then you know another filmmaker will decide to, to, that it's time to share their story and i think with with three to five movies of this scale we'll we'll have conquered this thing we'll we'll be able to move past this so I just, I get to be somewhere in that mix. And that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty fine by me. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So I definitely want to encourage all of my listeners to go and watch the 10 minute short of Under the Lights. Again, I'll put links in the show notes and definitely go and support the fundraising at Seed and Spark, which is going on. Miles, when does that, when does that fundraising campaign end? Ends at the last day of January, January 30th. Okay. All right. So you still have a, a few days, but this will this episode will air in January. So you will have time to go and go there, donate, check out the really awesome incentives that you can get related to the film for your donation. And uh, yeah, just uh, encourage everyone to be a part of and, and help support this really cool initiative, really important awareness. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess... Uh, a closing question I have for you is a general yeah. one. Is that like, what kind of impact do you want under the lights to have on epilepsy awareness? Well, um, I, I, if I get what I want, it's going to be a green light for people to share their own stories mm -hmm. and, and create a domino effect, which we've seen sort of in a microcosm with, with the short. And, uh, I want, I want enough conversations around epilepsy to be inspired by this that a kid old enough to go to camp, mm -hmm. right, to bring it all the way back around, yeah. doesn't ever utter the words, I've never made a friend before. Yeah. And I really think that that is, is very achievable. I think that that is very, very achievable. And that that is a cure that I can work on. That's awesome. Yeah, well, thanks so much, Miles, for being on my podcast and sharing your story and talking about Under the Lights. Really excited to see it go from its current short film status to a, a full-length motion picture. And uh, 
yeah, we'll definitely be there watching when that comes out. So thank you again for the work that you do. Thank you very, very much. This was a lot of fun.